So this is going to be a walkthrough on how I made this visualization for these pre-workshop AirPod head like headphone covers. This will not be a step-by-step -step tutorial necessarily because this whole process, I'm literally exactly following the process of my last Unreal Engine product visualization tutorial. So I'll leave a link in the description if you want an actual step-by-step -step process on how I made this because I follow that exact same tutorial. So I'll be showing you the things that I've done differently within this one and it's more of a walkthrough and explanation of how I you know made this. So it starts off by downloading a model of the airpods which there are so many online you can search airpod max 3d model and people have made uh, so many versions there's a lot of free ones out there you can just download any of them and use that so i downloaded it into rhino the brief was to visualize these but in a 3d model i did end up having a lot of issues with the texture mapping on this so i found the best way um, i was provided with this texture here and we need to map this onto the 3D model. So what I did in Rhino was I got this side of the headphone and then I put a plane like this and I put it through the headphones and used it to chop them up into different segments because if we look at a uh, image of it you'll see that you have the image texture on the headphone then it goes to like this kind of blue tingy color and then to the natural color of the headphone afterwards so texture mapping um onto a geometric surface like this where you can see the mesh is not it's not just a clean obvious easy um, mesh to map your uv texture onto i had a lot of issues with uv mapping because we only have a 2d image 2d texture the uv mapping got really difficult so i split the headphone into a few different surfaces so we have this one for the main texture and then there's like a little metal ring around it so you can see i split that up into a few different segments uh, but the rest of the model was pretty well modeled so i didn't have to do any amendments we just we simply highlighted it type in export and then export that as an unreal uh, datasmith file and so that's all for rhino so when we're importing uh, I did increase these light map resolution. I'm not sure if it actually did anything, but also I uh, kept materials and textures unticked. And then go import. And then this is what they look like when we first imported them. Now, keep in mind I've set up all the lighting and everything in the studio, so for now we'll just go unlit. Or I'll just put in a sun sky for now. Sorry, my laptop is like on life support right now. Don't know how many days it has left. Um, so I did have to go into up here, selection mode, modeling, and again, using the geometry normal fix just to either fix those or flip them. You always wanna make sure you check that when you're importing geometry into Unreal Engine, especially from things like Rhino. Once that's all fixed, you can see we now have our headphones like this. Now again, I've used the automotive material pack. I found this very useful. Also, they've updated it to 5 and 5.1. So that weird kind of hack that I had in the last video to import it, you can now just directly download this to your project because it's available in 5.1 now. Unless, of course, using 5.3, then you know you have to wait for them to update it again. But I found that using the automotive material pack, there's a lot of really good materials that I used and I was able to make the entire headphones just using car materials. So for example, for the kind of headphone part, if we look at a image of the actual product, it's kind of like this textile fabric almost. And so the perfect thing to use for this was I went to interior on the automotive materials, textile, and then they have the headliner used in cars. Turns out to be really good and almost completely accurate to what a headphone texture is. So I made a duplicate of this, and I made one for the white headphones and one for the black headphones. So I opened this up and I adjusted the UV mapping to make sure that the size of it matches the size of the headphones of your model. So if it's too big, it kind of looks strange like that. But by setting that to the correct UV, it looks like an actual headphone UV map. And I did that for the same thing. Uh, we have this little semi-transparent kind of bridge on the headphones where it's like uh, textile. So I just again use that same headliner material, but I opened this up 
and I used the perforation parameters. So I, I added some perforation in. You can see these are the settings that I used, but by doing this, it adds those little holes with a little bit of um, sh uh, shadow in between it. So it looks like a perforated material. And then for the main parts of the headphones, I just used an exterior metal. I just got the metal bump and then I made a variation of it where I got rid of the scratches, got rid of the handprints and adjusted the coloring of it just to make this kind of clean, semi shiny metal material. So now I'm going to open up the actual file that I was using and I'll show you how I mapped this texture on. So you can see here, this is the black uh, version of the headphones. So I used the darker version of the textile, a darker version of the metal bump. Also in Rhino, I made an offset of the mesh to make these plastic covers. So you can see here, I've got like this plastic overlay over the top. So that gives it the effect that these headphones have a cover on them rather than just being the textures mapped straight onto it. Well, you can see my texture mapping for some reason has moved. Maybe it's picked up a different texture, but to map the texture onto the headphones, I had to go into modeling, UVs, and after trying so many different variations, I tried completely remaking the UVs. Um, honestly, the UV stuff gets a little bit confusing. I'm not exactly sure how you would map just a simple texture like this. And I was trying to wrap it around the whole headphone as one object, but I found that really difficult to map the UV. So say that this top right hand corner would correlate to the top right hand corner of this. I got too confusing and a bit difficult. So I ended up just going project UVs and by splitting the headphones into different segments, I had this one front cover here and I just created a its own UV project uh, plane for this. So I just rotated it like this and you can go auto fit and then it maps the UV to this shape. It's not perfect, but you can see, there we go. Our texture is mapped to that UV. So let's go accept. And then that texture is now mapped onto this. So you can see it gets a bit iffy on the corners, but it was good enough. That's why I split this into segments. So that middle part, we go onto our reference image. It's like a little metal texture that goes around. I got that, I cropped that out of the original image and instead turned it into this 3D part so that texture kind of seamlessly goes around, even though it's a little bit slightly ever so out of whack on the corners, you don't notice it. So it goes to that middle and then it goes to that blue texture, which we see here. So it goes from the main image to that silver, then to that blue, and then just the headphone the natural headphone color behind that. So that was really difficult to map those on. I'm still new to the whole UV mapping, especially on Unreal Engine. I would not like to do this again. And then for the rest of it, I just used automotive silver material, increased the shininess of it a bit. Just use the interior plastic for the, uh, what do you call this, the bridge on the headphones. And so that's how we made those black ones. And then we have two products. The other one was these white ones with these stickers on it. There is a reference image. So we're trying to visualize these as an actual headphone uh, covers. So again, it has the plastic cover on top, but the stickers themselves, I've duplicated the plastic cover and then used the texture itself mapped onto that cover. So I just made a new material, made it into a, yeah, here's the texture. So just literally just texture onto RGB. Uh, the material is set to a surface blend mode masked. That's because it's to get rid of the transparent backgrounds and then shading model is just default lit. So you can see I just took, literally just took this, duplicated it, and then put my sticker material onto it like so. And then once that was put onto it, then we adjusted the UVs and the scale to you know get that into the center. So those ones were fairly more straightforward. All right, so that's how we got those headphones and materials into the scene. Now, next big thing was the lighting. Again, I just used the same method as my previous tutorial of setting up the lighting. I'll take you step by step on how I set the lighting up. First thing I do is the directional light. You wanna make sure that directional light is always very subtle and not the main light. Actually, before we even get into that, I'll show you the camera setup. 
So I added a new camera directly parallel to the headphones. Uh, because we're doing this for an Instagram post, I made the sensor width and height the same. Uh, not much else has really changed on that camera. I just made the lens length a lot uh, higher, so 150. So we go onto our camera now and view it. See our headphones are here, and I made a new level sequence. And I'll just take you onto that level sequence. And fairly straightforward, so I added our headphones, the actor, onto the sequence right here. And the simple transform starts off at rotation at the beginning at 0 and ends at 360. And I changed the length of this to be however long you want it, so I did 5 seconds. So when we press play, we simply just get a rotating version of the headphones. And so I go into the timeline and just select kind of you know anywhere in here. And then with the headphones in this position, with the camera in this position, then I selected the directional light. And I toned it down to be a bit darker to set up the direction and angle of it. So that directional light gives us our kind of main lighting, the things we want to specifically see. Then I added just a range of point lights all around it, just to light up the little details that you want to see. And because I did this with a white background, in our sequence settings, when we go render, I changed the some of the output settings. So I went deferred rendering and I ticked this, includes alpha, and changed it to a PNG sequence that also includes alpha. That way when we export it, the black background, because I've got nothing set as the background, is going to export as an image sequence with no background. So we're able to change the background to be either white or any color you want. So I put those point lights down and I used a couple of spotlights to really emphasize the edges and the parts of the headphones that we wanted to see. And you see, because we've used a decal texture, it gets a bit funny on the lighting sometimes. I had to do a few runs of this, but that's why I've got one spotlight that's literally directly onto that sticker because without it, it doesn't get lit up as it's rotating. So I had to use a spotlight there to light it up as it rotates. You can play around with what kind of material these are. You know, whether you want to use surface or def defer decal, mast and de default lit, change it to an actual uh, thin, translucent or whatnot. Uh, that takes a lot of experimenting and playing around to get that right. But that's pretty much how we got these headphones rotating. So this is what the white ones look like. And then we go into a different sequence where I set up the black ones. Again, I was able to use the same lighting for this. You can see the texture is a bit off on one of these, but that's all right. I changed that plastic thing to be a bit more frosted. It rotates. And then for the images, I did the same thing. You can see it's missing some of the parameters on the sequencer, but again, I just set up the shot first and I set up the lighting according to the shot. You know, again, high lens length, set up your camera and go into your image sequencer. I just rendered out the views. So the images were pretty straightforward. Just a little time lapse on me uh, rendering the headphones. It took a lot of adjusting the parameters, uh, playing around with the effects and especially the reflectivity of those plastic covers, getting the reflections right. You know, you don't want too much reflection on it, otherwise it gets a bit overpowering. So a lot of trial and error went into that. And you can see me rendering it here. Uh, here are the end results. We ended up getting just some decent looking images. And I put these into Photoshop and just adjusted some of the coloring, uh, increased the clarity a little bit, but that's all pretty fairly straightforward. So I hope that walkthrough gave you a bit of insight into how I made this visualization for these headphones. If you do want that full step-by-step -step guide and an actual tutorial on how to make these, I'll leave a link in the description to that video because I literally followed that process step-by-step. -step. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.